Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy back at it again. This is the Rico Report brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you guys can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Give me the give me the fist up. Give me the, the biceps. Give me all of that. Need that. We got a big time show today things to tackle things to talk about you know what i'm saying i got the new setup i'm still getting started with it smooth with it let's go it's the rico report <laughs> it's the buffalo fanatics and let's get to it ladies and gentlemen how are we doing on a tuesday evening because i know it's tough man it's the it's almost the beginning of the week you're still trying to, you know what I mean, get your day going. We're going into Wednesday. To me, I'm going into Wednesday because I got to work tonight. But you always know that I got to bring it to you guys on the Rico Report. But I got a few things to talk about. Now, big thing going today that we're going to talk about is the process or problem. You guys remember that. You guys remember that. Because we go through the whole roster in its entirety. We know. We're we're guessing who's going to make it, who's not. But at the end of the day, we don't know a damn thing. You guys already know that. So we're going to go into it. From quarterback all the way to cornerback. Who makes it? I'm going to go through how many roster spots we kept last year. And potentially what we're going to end up doing this year. Could it change? Highly doubtful. Will it remain the same? Probably. So... There's going to be some tough decisions to be made. Now, one uh, easy decision or easy shout out I got to give. There's a few shout outs I got to give today before we get this show started. So uh, as the room fills in, we're going to appreciate that. Now, here's the deal, my people. Um, we had a huge draft show coverage. We had massive. It was big. Uh, and what I'm trying to uh, make sure you guys understand is that we made we we fulfilled something to you guys. We said we get enough members, we're giving away. So I got to give a shout out to two people. One of them being Abby Waldo. Abby Waldo is going to be a uh, is going to uh, get an opportunity to choose something from the BF fan shop. So Abby, if you're watching or if you're catching the playback, hit us up. Whether it's on Instagram, whether it's my Twitter personally, hit me up, Abby. What's good? You got yourself yourself a sweater. Next up, we said we'd also uh, give a shout out to the Bing Squad. So B, as it's going to be Bills Mafia STF. Bills Mafia STF, you got yourself an opportunity to get yourself a uh, sweater of your kind, T-shirt, whatever you want. Summer's coming. Summer's coming, right? So you want to show the guns off? Get yourself a little, a little tank top. Either way, it's up to you. Uh, and we go get this thing popping. So uh, that being said, um, we will get into football stock, but I got to get into something uh, a little more personal. Um, a couple things. Uh, a, I get a lot of people hitting me up about how do I start my podcast? How do I do this? What equipment do I use? I get I get hit up like crazy. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you guys uh, a tidbit, right? I need you guys to go to Dark corner studios that's my guy aiden all right podcaster and he does tech reviews so all the equipment questions you may have i don't have them i go in and check these guys out my man aiden is the one who helped me out and he's on top of that he's got a youtube channel himself so dark corner studios hit my man's up i'll put all the description all that all that stuff in the description you guys can hit him after after hit him up afterwards but my man knows his stuff he is on point. And if you guys have those questions, he will have answers, texts, all that stuff. What microphone do I use? What the, That's him. He'll hook you up. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. Abby. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you do. Your chest for a sweater. That's what's up. You damn right, girl. So hit me up afterwards and we're going to talk. All right. Now, one thing before we get into the football talk. And this is the one I got to get to near and dear to my heart. So we have people that don't get recognized uh, when they should. Right. They do a lot of good things for people and it goes unnoticed uh, or nobody talks about it or that person is a good person, but it never really gets put out there and they don't necessarily need it. But you've got to have you have an opportunity to shout somebody out. 
you do. So I'm going to give a big shout out to Ormi King. You know who you are, Ormi. Um, and Ormi King is uh, a staple in the, and I want to say it right, in the Auburn County community. He's been there a long time. All right. Had a restaurant. Now, how dope is this? When you have a restaurant that you can go to and you can show your kids, your grandkids of all the sports memorabilia that happened in that county, in that town, right? Oh, this is the high school I went to. This guy had everything in that restaurant that you could hit up and you can, and you can look up, right? So going to a restaurant, you can say to my daughter, be like, Hey, you know what? Look at this. Look at this right here, man. I used to play high school with this guy and this guy, and it's all in this restaurant. Ormi made that happen. 12 years as a legislator, eight years at a city, as a city councilman, true gentleman. And the fact that he's always giving out to other people and doesn't get noticed, I got to give you a big shout out. You get a, good, a big shout out to my guy, Mr. Ormi King. You are that dude. You need to be recognized. You know what I'm saying? And this is the opportunity for people to know who you are, man. TV shows, uh, t newspaper articles, he did it. And what he what was really amazing about it is he always put a spotlight on other people, their families and what they've accomplished in sports and so on and so forth. So salute to you, Ormi. You need that. You deserve that. And uh, we're going to keep it rocking. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to be Bills Mafia. You're always going to be love. It's always going to be love. And shout out to you, Ormi King. Let's go. So, folks, let's get into real football chatter and before we get to real football chatter shout out to my guy adam anderson what's going on adam anderson welcome to the bing squad bing biggity bing let's go so check this out it is it is time for us to dissect what's going on around the league you guys already know what it is man around the league chatter there's a lot of things going on around the league and i gotta talk on it i need to talk on it i need to first things first First things first, what's up with my guy, Tim Tebow, man? Let me tell you something. First and foremost, Tim Tebow, good dude. You can't say anything bad about Tim Tebow. One of the biggest college stars probably ever. You know what I mean? Loved. What did he play in the SEC, I believe? One of the biggest stars in the SEC. Just dude is just that. He's that guy. You feel me? So... What I'm trying to get to is this. I want to, I want to, I want to, you got to give him his credit, right? As a man of faith myself, you got to respect the man that's a, that's a guy that's a man of faith, right? Stands on, stands on his principles, ridiculed. Oh, do, do this, do that, this, down the third. He didn't give a damn. Did what he had to do. Doesn't care. Goes to play some baseball. They say, man, you can't play baseball. You couldn't even throw a football. You think you're going to be able to play baseball? He didn't care. He went, did it. Salute to him, right? You're not a you're not a quarterback. Came in on orthodox throwing motion, all that good stuff, but comes up with a big big clutch play in the playoffs. Huge, right? So you got to give him his credit. You got to give him his credit. Now, he's been out of the league for what? Since 2012, 8 plus years. You know what I'm saying? We're going into we're in 2021. <laughs> and now you get an opportunity to go play tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars, first and foremost, how insulting it is to those that actually play the position, that have put in the craft, the time, you know what I mean, the effort, the blood, the sweat, all that good stuff into the position at tight end. And you're going to bring a quarterback that wasn't even good at the position to play tight end at 6'2", 240? Fam, Really? This this goes to this goes to tell you, you got to know people. I don't care how good you are, it doesn't matter. You have to know people, and that's what that's what it comes down to, man. No respect for the actual quarter. Like if I'm a if I'm a free agent right now, and I know I could play, and I'm watching this, and I'm looking at Tim Tebow. What are you kidding me? Is this a joke? It's utter disrespect. That's utter disrespect. That's number one. Number two. Relationships matter. This is very clear that relationships matter. Because if they didn't, Tebow would, would still be in the booth doing what he does. And I think he's good at what he does, talking college football. But my goodness, 
You're going to put him out at freaking tight end. And they've been trying to get this dude to play other positions, play fullback, play running back, play this. He said, no, I'm a quarterback. Now you're a tight end. Eight plus seasons later, out of the game, 6'2", 240, fam. Nah. Secondly, thirdly, excuse me. You can't sit there and talk about diversity when you see trash like this. Right? Diversity matters in this thing, man. You got a, a white head coach that comes in. Hires a, a freaking tight end that hasn't played that position ever in his lifetime. And you're going to sit here and tell me you can bring this guy back in the league, but you got guys like Kaepernick that's sitting out. Yeah, but they're playing different positions, Rico. It's not the point. He's been out of the league for X amount of years, but we bring him back. And I bring that diversity up because you get more black coaches, Hispanic coaches, whatever they might be more inclined to kind of diversify themselves. But nope, we're going to sit here and do this bullshit. It's going to be interesting. If he does well, good for him. But that's some bullshit. <laughs> a quarterback, you know what I'm saying, hasn't played in forever, going to play tight end. Man, please, I'm not, I'm not buying that. And, oh, I hear this too, but it's just for money. It's just to bring the fans in the stands. He's not going to play. He's not going to make the team. Really? All right. We'll, both, we'll, we'll find out. We will find out this Tim Tebow mess that's happening. Shout out to my guy, Truth to Heart, says, yo, I don't think it's disrespect because he's not guaranteed a job. It's no different if an owner sees a random person working out and asking to try for the team. It is disrespectful. Let me tell you why it's disrespectful. Because you, you, I'm busting my butt trying to make a roster somewhere. I play the position. I do this. I was in the league just last year. I'm trying to scratch and claw and try to find something. And then this guy comes in and, and takes a spot. That's a spot. Whether, whether he starts or not, that's a roster spot that's taken by a washed up quarterback that hasn't played in, in eight plus seasons. So that's where the disrespect comes in. If I'm like, if, if I was in contact with, you know what, let's put it this way. My agent is talking to the Jaguars. Yeah, yeah, we're looking. We're looking forward to having you in. We're going to bring you in. We'll sign you to minimum deal, and you, you'll you'll be competing for a position. We got one more spot as a tight end. Next day, you hear Tim Tebow is about to sign with the Jacksonville Jacksonville Jaguars. You're saying like, are you kidding me, Tim Tebow? <sighs> Come on, man, tripping, 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 tripping. <laughs> My man Bobby says, yo, do not have Tebow slander on my bingo part, my bingo board tonight. Boy, please, man. So they might, they're, they're, pro they're probably going to use him in every different way you can think of. Probably, for sure. But I'm, sh I mean, come on. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Don Keith says, oh, Rico, this is the same argument runners were using against DK Metcalf. Totally different. Totally different. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually, it's funny enough because th that's my next thing is DK Metcalf. All right. So DK Metcalf, 10, 300 yard dash at 6'3, 235, 237, whatever size he is. That's a big lad. That's a big boy. Kudos to him. Running with guys that are 5'8, 5'9, buck 70, buck 75, buck 80. Light on their feet, been doing it. And you got a guy like DK Metcalf that comes in and has actually held his own. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, somebody was like, well, it's no different than with, the, uh, with the DK Metcalf and Tim Tebow. Far different. Far different. These guys have done track. You don't think DK has done track in his lifetime? He's done that before. He's done that before for sure. And you got to give him respect, man. He held his own, man. Although he didn't qualify, you got to give it to him, man. <laughs> you got to give it to him. Keeps him in shape, does, does all that stuff. And now it puts the league, I wouldn't say it puts the league on notice per se, but it, it definitely puts uh, some DBs to say, yo, this man can't, he can run. You already knew he could run, but you see that. That boy can run. 
Don says, uh, but runners were trashing him. I, I didn't see any slander coming his way. I honestly didn't. I, I'll have to look because I was re reading mad articles, mad Twitter stuff, and I didn't see. No, I, I, all I saw was love. Yo, appreciate. That's a, that's a tough feat to do what he did. And he did pretty decent. Didn't qualify, but he did well. But I didn't see any. I didn't see any slander on that. But good, good on DK, man. Good on DK. You got to give it to him. Last but not least on, on news around the league. Our guy, Aaron Rodgers. Hey, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Now the chatter has come about that he, is, uh, sorry, the Packers are working on a deal to give him more money. Yo, when people are unhappy, more money doesn't, uh, doesn't solve the issue. <laughs> I, he already has money. Dude is already banking. He's already caking heavy. And you're going to throw him more money? And you think that's going to solve it? He doesn't like what y'all are doing with your organization for whatever reason. I mean, he's got several reasons, I'm sure. But if you throw him more money, he's going to be the same individual. He ain't going to like it. So I don't know if that's going to happen because the word is we're going to give you more money. But he's like, but the team is far not happy. They're both not happy with each other. But money's on the table. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to offer you more money, but you hate this job. You hate your job. You're still going to hate your job. You just get paid more. Mm, I don't know. It's a little funny. A little funny. Man. I don't know what's going on with the Packers, man. That's craziness. Now, if I'm a player and I just signed with the Packers, knowing that Aaron Rodgers is going to be my quarterback, so we're, all, we're, always, we're obviously going to be, um, you know what I'm saying, a, co a competitor, we're going to be competing for a spot. So to me, I'd be thrilled. And then I hear all this nonsense that he could be traded. He could be this. He could be that. Right? You think, you think Aaron Jones would have re-signed if that were the case? Yo, Aaron, you're not coming back? Aaron Rodgers not coming back? All right, well, shit. I ain't coming back then. The hell would I sign for? I signed because I knew that I'd have a team around me. Nope. You, do you think, who, who, who'd I have? Uh, Bakhtiari would sign again? Who's my quarterback? Jordan Love? Nah, you know what? I'm going to test free agency. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you go from Aaron Rodgers to, to Jordan Love, and people, people say that he's not ready yet? I'm thinking twice. <laughs> you get the employee discount. Somebody said you get the employee discount, right? You think Mike Davis is coming back? You think Mike Davis is coming back? Ah, uh, nah, nah, nah. We can't do that. We definitely can't do that. That is for damn sure. That Aaron Rodgers, it's a mess, man. It's messy. It's definitely messy. But you know what? I'm sure it's going to work itself out some way. One way or another, it's going to work itself out. Real talk. Shout out to my guy, Jeff King. Jeff King in the building. What's up, Mr. King? He says, yo, from my siblings, my mother and myself, thank you. You made him smile uh, and you made his day. I pray. <laughs> For that, you will always have my respect and support. Thank you, Rico and the BF family. Man, Jeff. That's love, man. You didn't even have to do that. I told you. You didn't have to do that, man. People, people need to be uh, celebrated for the things that they do in life, man. Yo, it is a blessing to be, I don't know how old Mr. King is, but it is a blessing to, to be still living right now and still being able to be, you know what I'm saying, celebrated and you see it and you hear it and you remember it, all that good stuff, man. It will salute to Ormi and the family and the King family. That's love, man. That's real love. You take care. You you take care of that man. You take care of that man. That's all. I, that's all I ask for. Shout out to what uh, G Seal says. Yo, swap Rogers and Wilson. I don't know if that's. I don't have. I haven't seen that as conversation. I have not have. I have not seen that as conversation. But I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. Can't see it happening. So. That being said. There's a lot of mess going on around the league, uh, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it because I just I just purchased myself some stock with uh, with uh, with Sims. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We doing some big things, and uh, I chose I bought the Bears. I bought some stock with the Bears. So if we can get some things going, I think they got Jenkins over there. They just brought in the quarterback over there. So uh, the Bears, I mean, with this whole thing going down with with uh, the Packers, I think we got an opportunity for these Bears to do some things. 
for these bears to do some things. But we're we going we gonna to find out. We'll see. We'll see exactly uh, what goes on, because right now, uh, this symbols that I'm in, that I'm part of right now, um, y'all should jump on that. It's dope. I'm about to make some I'm about to make some money with these bears, man. <laughs> Stop playing around. Stop playing around. So let's get into some Bills football talk because I think it's necessary. The draft is now complete. We did what we have to do. Oh, I see. I see my man Kendall's in this. He says, yo, symbols, $10 promo. Tell me right now. Jump on that. What is on that? It's called the symbols, my man. Barry Cumberbatch. Rico, what's the app for buying them team stock? It's called Symbol. Okay. Y- y'all need to hit that up. Symbol. It's a, it's a sports exchange. You jump on that. Right now, buying stock with the bills is cool, but the bills are rising. But you got to start. You got to get a team that's like on the come up. And I think the Bears might be that team. They got the defense. They got the quarterback. They got some pieces. The Bears might be making a move, man. The Bears might be making a move. So if you guys are looking to get on that stock, jump on that. And speaking of jumping on that, Ryan Thiel. Rico, what's up tomorrow night with the schedule release, man? Everyone smash those likes. We're about to get into that right now. My man Dave. My man Dave says, yo, I'm going with the Sim Panthers. That's a good look. You go with the Panthers, you're set. They got themselves a quarterback. They got themselves a running back. You know what I mean? They got some, they got some quarter, they got receivers out there. Defense is all right. And they're on the come up. That's where you want to put your money. That's not bad, man. The Lions are on the come up as well. I'm going with the Bears. The Bears. Make me some money. Make me some money. All right. Schedule release coming out tomorrow. It's super hype. But guess what? I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a damn. What is so exciting about this damn schedule release? It doesn't matter. You can put up the Bears against us, the Lions, the freaking Jaguars, the Patriots. Does it matter? We are one of the best teams in the league. Just put the damn schedule on. We already know who we're playing. They told us who we're playing. But are we going to get... Some primetime games. You damn right we're going to get some primetime games. You damn right. But I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not all gung-ho like a lot of people are. I just, it's just whatever. Do you, you want to know something though? In my, what, where I've been working at my place for almost seven, eight years, seven to eight years. And I'm not one that uses a lot of personal days. Just don't. This past year. I was burning up personal days on these damn games that are at eight o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Seven o'clock. Cause I can't, I gotta do the post game. So I was burning up personal time, man. She although I was happy to do it, but then you see my personal time starts going down. My personal days. I'm like, damn, man. Yo, bring me back them one o'clock games, man. <laughs> Maybe a couple, a couple here and there. But shit, if we go to six, six games of prime time, golly. I can see it happening. R.I.P. to my damn personal days and my sick days. Shit. What do we have? Four last year? Did we have four last year? Okay, so we're probably going to have four again this year. Maybe more. Maybe more. We're about to find out, though. But golly, man. R.I.P. to my damn personal days. Because you know me. I can't miss a damn Bills game, number one. And number two, I got to hit up the post game. Can't not do it. Y'all need it. I need it. Don't forget, these things started... These post games started because I needed somewhere to vent. I can't vent to the wife. She's going to be like, okay, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. All right, get over it. No, I won't get over it. And this is the time we were losing. <laughs> we weren't a good team, so I needed to vent somewhere. Now that we start winning, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm gloating. I'm like, babe, listen, listen up. <laughs> we that team. Okay, all right. I, I, I believe you. You know what? I got to go talk to my Bills Mafia. I got to go talk to my Buffalo Fanatics. They're the ones that's going to show me some love like my guy Justin Walker is right now. Shout out to my guy Justin Walker. What's good, Justin? Welcome to the Bing Squad. Bing, biggity, bing. All right. Process or a problem? You guys, If you guys are new to the channel, this is where I go through the roster, this full roster right now, and deem who is part of the process and who's part of the problem. That is the real question. And we're about to find out. Let me turn this mic around. Are we good? 
We're about to find out. And we go through it. Now, before we go through it, I need to I need to give a shout out to my guy, my man Bobby, came up with this graphic last year, and we bring it up again. So this is the Bills roster breakdown that we had last year. All right. We went three quarterbacks, four running backs, six receivers. That's the key. Six receivers, four tight ends, nine linemen, nine offensive linemen, five cornerbacks, four safeties, six linebackers, and nine defensive linemen. That includes the defensive tackles. It's going to be tough to come up with a 53-man roster. 55, I believe. By the way, shout out to my guy, D. Handsome. Nice mic. And by the way, D. Handsome, I believe I have something for your young lady. And I forget her name, but you gave me her name. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Pretty girl, I know you've been watching. I hear that your father tells me that you're a big fan of the Rico Report. I said that I wouldn't cuss because you'd be listening. So salute to you, my lung, my young lady, pretty girl. Don't forget you listen to your daddy. All right. Whatever your daddy says, you do. Because he's gonna love you all the he's gonna love you no matter what. If you even if you do some little things that might get you in trouble. But salute to D Handsome and his beautiful little girl. So look, I, I had to give you a shout out, man. I had to remember that. D Handsome, that's my that's my guy. Moving along. Ombre Rob, what's going on, man? What's happening? What's happening? So Here's the deal. Who we cutting, who we keeping? That's what it comes down to. So we're going to start off with. Oh, yeah, here we go. Ava Alyssa. Oh, that's a pretty name. I like that, man. Ava Alyssa. <laughs> yes, that's a beautiful name. I love that. I love that. That's a, that's a nice name. I like that a lot. So let's get right into it, baby. Who we cutting, who we keeping? And I need your help. I need your help. To, to let's make this roster work, all right? You already know the roster breakdown, how many we keep and how many we, we got to get rid of. So let's get right to it. We're going to hop, we're going to hop onto the quarterback room. I mean, that was, that's, that's the easiest one. We got to start off with the, Q, the QB room. So let's keep it real. Josh Allen is our guy. Trubisky is the second. It's going to be between Fromm and Davis Webb for the third but we're not going to have an actual active third quarterback. That person is going to be always inactive. So who is going to be the, the person that is not part of the process that you got to go? Who is that? We know Josh Allen's the man. Josh Allen, number one. Trubisky, number two. Jake Fromm or Davis Webb? Who y'all got? Abby's saying, but Abby's saying probably Fromm is going to make the team. Davis Webb is gone. Now, before we even, so Randy says keep all three. We're, we're going to keep three. One's going to be inactive, and two are going to be active, but we're not going to keep four. We're definitely keeping three. That we know. But between Davis Webb and Jake Fromm, who are we keeping? So Ombre Rob, Ombre Lob, excuse me, says uh, let Fromm play for a preseason and trade him for a fourth when, we, when he shows out. <laughs> that could be some. Or Trubisky might be that guy that we want to hold on to. And if somebody prominent goes down, we have a starting caliber quarterback ready for the trade. That could be an angle to take. But if I'm making the decisions, I'm, I'm Mr. GM Rico. And I got to choose between Jake Fromm and Davis Webb. Real talk, though. And if we're, if we're keeping it a buck and I got to keep one, I'm I'm gonna move on from Davis Webb. And you gotta come with you gotta come with the youth. I know Davis Webb is, I mean, a teacher in the background, but I think that he's taught enough. Can you ever teach enough? But I think that your main quarterback is already ascending to elite level. Not that he can't learn anymore, but you got another Trubisky, you got a quarterback coach that's there. I think it'll be all right. So from We'll probably make the team or be on the inactive list, and then we'll move on from Davis. But they might put Davis since we've we've actually increased the or we're keeping the practice squad number to sixteen. They might put my man on the uh, the sixteen on the uh, the practice squad. Davis Webb on the practice squad. We'll find out. 
So that'll be interesting. So Davis Webb, practice squad. Inactive list, they, uh, Jake Fromm. Quarterback number two, Trubisky, our elite franchise quarterback, Josh Allen. Easy enough. Move on. Let's go to the running back room. The RB room. Now, this is going to be interesting because we don't necessarily run with a number one back type mentality. It doesn't, it just hasn't, it's not been that way since McDermott has got to Buffalo. There's always been a shared responsibility at the running back room. LaShawn McCoy was our main guy, but then we went away from LaShawn McCoy and it's just been, it's been a two back system since, right? Frank Gore, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, almost splitting, splitting the, 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 the carries and the reps. So when it comes to the RB room, how are we going to distribute this? So let's, let's do this, man. Who's in the RB room? We got six running backs, six freaking running backs. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, Matt Breida, Antonio Williams, Taiwan Jones, and then we got our guy Christian Wade. Now, this is very, this is tricky because a lot of people was like, we need to draft a running back. Yet, on the side of their mouths, they were talking about, we love Antonio Williams. Did you see what he did against the Dolphins? Do you know how many times Antonio Williams got cut? <laughs> they were just unsure about my guy. He finally got a great opportunity and took full advantage of it. And people liked what they saw. But I need your help. Bills fanatics, Buffalo fanatics, Bills mafia. I need your help, man. Who are we keeping at this RB room, in this RB room? My guy, Tilt Money. That's my boy. He says, Singletary, Moss, Breida, Jones. That's it. The rest of the team is cut. Okay. You don't want to spice it up a little bit, Dave? You don't want to spice it up? Does somebody come in and kind of kill the game? I don't know, man. AK Cash says, yo, single, single Terry Moss, Breida Jones, Williams to the practice squad. All right. Now, one thing that I'm unsure of, and I think I got it down pat, but I'm not sure, is what is the deal with Christian Wade? I know he's on the exempt list. But does he still have the opportunity to make the team? Because if he makes the team or they see enough in him, they remove him from the exempt list. And now he's he's official Dizzle. He's part of the the process of making this team. But if they feel he's not ready, they they keep him on the exempt list. And then once the regular season starts, he remains on the regular season. But in preseason, does he have the opportunity to make the team? To actually make the Roster. I'm still unsure about how that plays out. Let's just say it plays out that he can make the team. Excuse me. Let's just say that he can make the team. And he's not on the exempt. He's on the exempt list, but, be, but he can still be removed from the exempt list if they see enough from him. Can he push to make the squad? Don't forget, you have to be a special teams guy. If you're not one of the, if you're not one, two, or three. You got to be special teams. That's where Tyrone Jones comes in. Dare we keep five RBs? And I'll explain to you why I mentioned the five RBs because that ties in to the receiver room. But we'll get into that. So the running back room looks like this. This is what I. This is how I see it. Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, Matt Breida, Tyrone Jones. They like him. He did a stint with the Bills before. He then went to the Texans. Now he's back with the Bills. Is he a lock? Probably. So it looks like we might be going with the same running back room we went with last year. Boring. But that's okay. By the way, shout out to Da. I'm going to say Da Wee. <laughs> da Wee. Yo, li yo, I listened to your podcast on Spotify. Much respect. Shout out from Rochester, New York. Bill's Mafia for life. Yo, I, sp I appreciate you, Dawi. I appreciate you, my G. Or my lady. That's love. 
Bills Mafia STF says, yo, if we truly go to going more zone again, best bet is they all start around <laughs> one of three of the snaps. So a third of the snaps week one. So somebody emerges between Moss, Motor, and Brita. That's where this freaking preseason comes in and practice. Practice is big. But here's the thing. Even the players were saying that Antonio Williams is that guy in practice. He just needed his opportunity. And the fact that he had an opportunity in the last week of the season doesn't necessarily make him a cut candidate. We got to see how he does. But we drafted two running backs in the third round, so those guys are locks. Breida, maybe Breida underwhelms. Maybe he's not that guy that we were looking for. Maybe Antonio Williams takes Breida. I think people are assuming that Breida makes the team regardless. I don't think he's a lock. I don't think Breida is a lock. People are going to be like, yo, you crazy, man. Am I? Seriously, am I? What if Antonio Williams just is that much better than him? It just fits the scheme. This offense fits better for Antonio Williams. You can't see him taking Breida's spot. Because don't forget, the reason that we have Breida on this team because we want speed. What if Williams gives you what you need at that running back, man? Vision. Sees the hole. You don't need the speed. He just, he just gets it. We'll find out. I'm not saying that it's, it's a lock that he's going to beat out Breida. They bought Breida in for a reason, but I'm not saying Breida is a lock. It's not a lock. We got to let this shit play out because Antonio Williams is going to have a chip on his shoulder. I'm going to tell you that right now. Truth to hearts, is it possible that Williams is battling Singletary? Ooh, we. Maybe. Maybe. Yo, listen, this is going to be a battle this week because this, this, this offseason, because there is no clear cut number one running back. So you know they're all vying for some playing time. The advantage goes to Moss and Singletary. That's the advantage. But there's going to be competition. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you guys a little story. Russell, Williams, Russell Wilson gets drafted in the third round. That offseason, they signed Matt Flynn to a big extension or a big freaking free agent deal. You would think that he was going to be the main guy, right? Russell Wilson, third rounder, is going to sit behind him, learn the ways, blah, blah, blah. Russell Wilson comes in and kills the game and takes over. <laughs> they paid a boatload of money to Matt Flynn. It didn't matter. Competition. Russell Wilson said, nah, fam. I'm in this. You gave me an opportunity. I'm going to take full advantage of it. And he surely did. He surely did. So, competition is open. Competition is open. <laughs> yo, my man Matt Montgomery, yo. Matt Flynn had one good game. Yo, that one good game got him paid. Got him paid. Here comes Russell Wilson. And the reason I bring this up is nothing's for certain. Nothing is for certain. Nothing is, is concrete that you got that squad. So let's run it back. The running back room. Here's the way I look at it. And this is very early. This could be completely wrong. This is going to be interesting to see how it, it ends up happening once everything materializes. So as of right now, what are we, the May 11th? Shout out to my brothers. My brother's birthday today, May 11th. So Moss, Singletary, Breida for now, Taiwan Jones. And then we'll have, we'll have my man on the practice squad, Antonio Williams, waiting. If somebody does get hurt, here he comes. So we'll see how that, we'll see how that plays out. That's the running back room. So who gets cut right now? If I have to cut somebody, let's just say they don't make the team, it's Antonio Williams. Right, this is part. This is part is part of the process. It's right process or problem. Who's the problem? Antonio Williams is the problem for now. He is the problem. See you later, Antonio Williams. Davis Webb. See you later. You're the problem. You're not part of the process. So part of the process in the running back room: Singletary, Moss, Breida, Jones, Christian Wade, and Asterix. Because I got to look more into if he's even able to compete for a spot, and then they remove him from that exempt list but as for now he's on the exempt list i'm not even counting him moving on process or problem we're going we're going we're going to bring it to the tight end room so last year how many tight ends did we keep 
We kept four tight ends. Four tight ends is what we kept. So, I mean, this one's pretty easy, right? Dawson Knox, Hollister, Sweeney. There's your three. And then Gilliam, four, slash fullback. To me, that's an easy room right there. Tyler Croft is gone. Lee Smith is gone. So they didn't really shake up the room too much. Yes, I know we brought in a rookie, undrafted. We'll see how that goes out, how that plays out. But right now, I think those are my four. I'm not sticking to it. So whoever's, I mean, right now, Nate Becker, not part of the process. I don't even know what Nate Becker looks like. <laughs> no disrespect. I just don't. <laughs> you feel me? So to me, that's the way that room's going to go. Quentin Morris is that, is, the, is that guy. But here's the thing. Kendall, Quentin Morris is not a dual fullback slash tight end. So this is where, and a special team's ace. This is where Gilliam has the ultimate advantage. The ultimate advantage. you got to play special teams. And that's what he does. He does that well. Plays a little fullback if we need to. We might be doing a little more, a little more 12 personnel. Maybe he's in the mix. We'll find out. We shall find out. So that tight end room is pretty easy to me. How y'all feel about this thus far? Are we, are we calling this team? Are we calling it all right so far? So it's going to get a little tougher now when we get to the receiver room. I'll tell you that. It's going to be tough. Ethan Page says, yo, Antonio Williams is better than Moss and Singletary. Damn, that's a hot take. I get there were third rounders, but come on. Watch the film on that last game, and there's no denying it. All right. Well, Ethan Page, he had a good game. What do we have? 12 carries, 13 carries for 62 yards, two touchdowns. I remember. I was there. I watched the game. But it was one game. <laughs> one game. He, caught, he got cut like two or three times to the point where I thought he was going to be out of the league. Because he started going, to, he started coaching. He went back to North Carolina to coach, and he went and he was doing NASCAR. So he was always he was like, "I'm almost out," until they called him back. So I'm not quite sure that he's better than Singletary Moss. He's good. He's a good running back. Don't get me wrong. That's why it's going to be a freaking battle. It's going to be a battle. That being said, we're gonna <laughs> my man Matt Montgomery. Eminem says, yo, Antonio Williams is our Matt Flynn. One good game. <laughs> really, it's just one good game. We can't, we can't just trip on one game. You, we, we, need, we need a body of work. So this is where you're going to have all offseason to prove yourself, Mr. Antonio Williams. I'm sure you're a good guy, too. But shit, you got some dogs in that running back room. Let's go. Don't get me started with getting Pollard. You know I would. You know I would. Tony Pollard, it's the starter. Number one back. That's just me. So we did the RB room. We did the quarterback room. We did the tight end room. Here we go. The freaking receiver room. Who's getting cut in this receiver's room, man? Lord knows. We've got some tough decisions to make. Let me show you something here real quick. Take a look at what we had last year. This was our offense last year. Josh Allen, Matt Barkley, Jake Fromm. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, TJ Yeldon, Taiwan Jones. Four backs. Right? Tight end room. Dawson Knox, Tyler Croft, Lee Smith, Reggie Gilliam. Right? Tyler Croft gone, Lee Smith gone. Enter Hollister. You feel me? Reggie Gilliam is, is obviously part of that. And then enter coming back in, Tommy Sweeney. Now let's go to the, let's go to the receiver room. Check this out. Stefan Diggs, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Guess what? That's six receivers. Two of those guys are gone. So how do we manage to make this work? So let's go to the receiver room. Let's talk about it. Let me, let me rhyme. Let me list off who we have in this receiver room, and then we'll decide together on what we do. Because I'll tell you right now, you might think some people are going to be cut, but I'll tell you different. So let's do this. Who's getting cut in this receiver room? Is it Isaiah McKenzie? I have a I have something to tell you guys. I don't think Isaiah McKenzie's getting cut. I think he's got a secure spot on this team. It's going you guys are probably like, well, what do you mean? We just drafted, you know what I mean? Stevenson. What are you talking about? Fam. 
He put up eight touchdowns last year with his very, very limited role. He's familiar with the offense. He's familiar with the quarterback. They, they, they like him around that team. Chemistry means a lot to this management team. They means, it means a lot to this coaching staff. But enough about me. Let's get into who makes the team. So who do we know is the locks on this team? By the way, shout out to each and every one of you guys tuned in to the Rico Report. Shout out to each and every one of you guys. Shout out. Let me give you guys another shout out. Let me give you a shout out again. You guys are tuned in to the Rico Report. There's 228 people. Let's get this thing to 250 people on a Tuesday evening. Let's go. Here we go. Running back room. Excuse me, the receiver room. You got Dawson Knox. Excuse me, I think you got me saying Dawson Knox. <laughs> you got Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, Gabe Davis. Those are your three right there. Those are your, those are your, your, we're not even talking about anything else. Those are your three. Emmanuel Sanders, four. We just brought in Emmanuel Sanders on a one-year deal. There's your four right there. You got two more spots to fill. Who are you filling with those two more spots? This is where things get interesting, people. Isaiah McKenzie is in that mix. Marquez Stevenson in that mix. Tanner Gentry definitely in that mix. Isaiah Hodgins in that mix. He was supposed to make the roster last year. Fam, that's four receivers for two spots. A lot of people are mentioning Kumaro. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure Kumaro is in that mix, fam. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm be real with you. He's not, make, he's not part of the process. He's not. So what are we doing, people? Talk to me now. See, you guys are sleeping on Tanner Gentry. You guys are sleeping on Tanner Gentry. Wake up. Tanner Gentry not only has 4-3 speed, good size, has a relationship with the franchise quarterback, and has return ability, can take kicks and punts back. Brandon Powell is part of that mix. So the biggest question mark here is return. Who is able to return? I'll tell you that right now. I do not want Micah Hyde touching the rock in any way, shape, or form in returning punts or kicks. No, thank you. It was kind of like when, when we had um, Micah, when Micah Hyde was taking kicks back and he was, all he was doing was just feeling them. That's it. No return ability, nothing. Not interested. Fred Jackson, back in the day, used to sit there and return punts for us. He would field them. That's it. No, thank you. I, do, I want no parts of that. I want my return guy to be an immediate threat. So I'm going to tell you right now, Isaiah McKenzie gets the fifth spot. Chemistry with the quarterback. Chemistry with the team. Production on the field when he's on the field. Eight touchdowns, and they're giving him all opportunities to return punts. That's huge. A cash says, didn't know Gentry had 4-3 speed. Boy, he has speed. He can run. Don't play with me, man. Here comes my guy, Bobby Ray. With the hell on say, Bobby Ray, I'm going to get you. Anybody knows what happened to Kenny Stills? Is he still on the roster? No, nah, man, he's gone. Not on the roster. Bobby Ray says, yo, it's going to be Diggs, Sanders, Beasley, Davis, McKenzie, Stevenson, Call it a day. Let's go. That might be your starting six receivers. Now, we drafted McKenzie, excuse me, we drafted Stevenson for his elite speed. I know he ran a 4-5 or something like that, but when he gets on the field, it's a different ball game. That boy can run. Game speed is top notch. Y'all know who McCall, 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 I keep messing up that, that man's name, man. McCall Hardman is. They had the same speed on the field, 21.9 miles an hour. Boy can, boy can fly. 36 yard, he, I think he averaged 36 yards of a freaking kick return. So going back, who is part of the process and who is part of the problem? Well, let's go through it. Process, digs. 
process Sanders, process Cole, process Davis, process McKenzie. That sixth spot is the toughest. You guys knew I used to ride hard for Duke Williams. Duke! I used to ride hard for my man Duke. It's a different ballgame now. That sixth spot, I got to give it to the Rook, Stevenson. But it's going to be a battle, man. It's going to be a battle. McKenzie is going to make this team. But it's not like, oh, it's a lock. He's going to make that. Because he better come with it. If they were comfortable with that, that spot, especially for return man, they would have left that position open and said, you know what? He's our guy. We don't need to wor worry about a receiver. We're straight. We got Tanner Gentry. We got a whole bunch of guys on the squad. So not part of the process. Pains me to say this. Potentially, Hodgins makes no, he doesn't make the team. Damn. Are we deep at receiver? Or is it a, is it a, is it a, is it circumstantial? Because we need receiver, we need receivers that can actually return. We might have no choice to have him on the block. Ooh, damn. New Mexico EJ just called me out. He says, yo, Rico, you better stop sleeping on Isaiah Hodgins. Fam, it's not about sleeping on Isaiah Hodgins. It's about who is going to return. Let's play this game. We put Isaiah Hodgins on the squad at receiver. Now, it's between McKenzie and Stevenson. What do you think? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that for real. <laughs> yo, my man Bobby Williams says, yo, you should do audio books. <laughs> yo, you a fool, man. You a fool. It's the microphone, man. I just got a new mic. She got me, got me in my bag. So, he, honestly, if you want to put Isaiah Hodgins on the team, then we got to really talk about that sixth receiver spot, which is Isaiah McKenzie or Stevenson, because that person is going to be a dual, dual player. They're going to be a receiver, but they're also going to be taking on the duties of kick returning and punt returning. What of what avoid Andre Roberts filled with that position takes big responsibility. Your main job is to return kicks and punts. But when we, need, when we need you to fill in gadget plays and so on and so forth, this is where you're going to come in. So let's reverse that. Isaiah Hodges makes the team. The competition is going to be between McKenzie and Stevenson. Shit. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Who makes the squad? McKenzie or Stevenson? Let me know. Stevenson looks good, looks so good. Hope he can stay healthy. I hope everybody stays healthy. Robert Morlock says Isaiah McKenzie can make this team. Of course he can. The question is, will he? <laughs> That's the real question. Juan Castillo says this is the year they keep seven at receiver. They haven't done it since McDermott's been here. Why would they change things up now? They got to have two that can return in case someone gets hurt or goes through a slump. Hey. Now, that's something. Now, that is something. Because I'll tell you this right now. McKenzie can do both. We've seen it before. We saw it last year. But I'll tell you right now, if we mess around and put Stevenson, Marquez Stevenson, on the special, on freaking practice squad, he's gone. They're going to scoop him up. So we'll find out. Stevenson has a lot of issues at receiver, man. He's a developmental gadget guy. So you're not feeling it? Tilt Money says, yo, they also haven't had a QB slinging it 600 times a year. That's true, too. We got a quarterback that can throw the rock. Yo, this receiver, this receiver position is always a freaking issue every year because we bring in talented guys. But at the end of the day, the guys that we think are not going to make the team are the ones that make the team. So I'm going to go with my gut here. My gut tells me, it's going to be my, my Isaiah McKenzie that makes the team. Hodgins gets cut. Or practice squad. Stevenson makes the squad. 
Here's your six. Stevenson, McKenzie, Davis, Cole, Emmanuel Sanders, Stefan Diggs. Process. Let's go. Let's go to the hoggies, the big uglies, the big boys, the big belly fellas. How we feel about the old line? Let's talk about it. Let's go back. How many linemen did we keep last year? Here it is. Mitch Morse, Deion Dawkins, Ty Seke, Dara Williams, Cody Ford. Quentin Spain, what a sad situation. Brian Winters, what a bum. Ide Bucker came back. Ryan Bates, back with the squad. Nine linemen. We have quite a few linemen this year on the squad. It's going to be interesting what we do. So let's talk about it. Deion Dawkins, Cody Ford. Cody Ford, you ain't no lock, my guy. You're not a lock. That's just my opinion. You are not a lock. But for now, we're going to pencil you in as a starter. Deion Dawkins, Cody Ford, Mitch Morse, John Feliciano, Feliciano, excuse me, Daryl Williams. There's your five. All right? We got four more linemen to keep. This is where things get interesting. So here's what I say. Forrest Lamp, Ryan Bates, Tommy Doyle, Spencer Brown. There's your nine. Is anybody disagreeing with me there? Anybody in, Anybody disagreeing with me? Talk to me now. Should I run that back for you guys? So here's, here's our linemen all together. Other than the final, the, the five that are starting, we got Tommy Doyle, Spencer Brown, Ryan Bates, Forrest Lamp, Reed Ferguson, but he's a long slapper, long slapper, long snapper, so I'm not worried about him. Then we got Jarrell uh, on the squad, uh, and a few, a few other, other names that we brought on. It doesn't matter. Here's the deal. Forrest Lamp is going to be battling for, or sorry, Jack Anderson. Forgot about Jack Anderson. We draft another lineman. Jack Anderson seems to be getting a lot of love from the people. We'll see how he, how, he, how he performs. I have a special guest that will be joining me on Friday. That will be, we'll be talking about, he's a scout. He's a, a scout, um, part of scout.com. Um, and he's going to be joining us on Friday. And we are going to talk all about this roster, especially Spencer Brown. And I'm going to tell you right now, this individual says Spencer Brown can actually retain a starting position. Y'all heard me. Y'all heard me. He can actually take a starting position, but he's a right tackle. Does that mean he takes the position of, oh, that's right, Daryl Williams? Are we really truly going to give that up? Seriously speaking, y'all see that happening? I don't, but it's possible. It is possible. If he gets in that playbook, we might have Spencer Brown at right tackle. Some people want to say, oh, man, you tripping. What You tripping, Rico. You just never know. You just never know. This is the same situation with Russell Wilson. <laughs> Russell Wilson and Matt Flynn. We just signed Darrell Williams to, uh, to an extension. Here comes the third round draft pick. It, he's he's impressive. Six foot eight, 311, can move light on his feet. And he's got a bit of nasty to him. People, Spencer Brown might be coming for that right tackle spot. Just saying. And now, what do we do with that right guard position? Does Daryl now move over to right guard? And now it's a competition between him and John Feliciano. Now, John Feliciano becomes the depth that we need at center. Just in case, Mr. Morse, you know what I mean, has his struggles. Maybe gets him injured with a concussion. We have to shuffle the line again. And I can tell you right now, I can promise you, McDermott is going to shuffle that line like he did last offseason, just in case some guys get hurt. I want to see what this line looks like. So a lot of this has to do with Mitch Morse as well. If Mitch Morse goes down, the the most interesting, <laughs> my man Tilt is not having it. My man Tilt is not having DW 
at right guard. He's like, please, good Lord, no. <laughs> please, God, no, no, no Daryl Williams at right guard. I'm just saying. Because if Spencer Brown takes over, what is he, just depth? And we leave John Feliciano at, at right guard? All right, then Daryl Williams becomes depth. Or we trade him like we did, like we did, uh, what do you call us, uh, uh, Spain? Did we trade Spain or did we let him go? I can't remember. I think we let him go. I just released him. We're not going to release Darren Williams. I can tell you that much. But I think this old line room is easier than I thought. I anticipated. I thought it was going to be harder, but it's probably easier to, to, to call that line. So let's go back to it. Deion Dawkins, left tackle. Cody Ford, penciled in as left guard. Morse, Feliciano, Darren Williams, Spencer Brown, Tommy Doyle, Ryan Bates, and I'm missing someone. Who am I missing? Ryan Bates. Do, 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 do. Forrest Lamp. There's your, ni there's your nine linemen. That's easier than I thought. Forrest Lamp backs up left guard. Tommy Doyle backs up left tackle. Becomes a swing tackle. He's done both left and right. Spencer Brown backs up the right tackle. Ryan Bates backs up right guard. And then we have... We have uh, John Feliciano that can come in and swing in. And Ike Butker. Jeez, I forgot about Ike Butker. Golly. I forgot about Ike Butker. Maybe it's not as easy as I thought. Not as easy as I thought. My man Bobby Ray says, yo, Lamp over Anderson. Oh, Lamp or Anderson. I mean, I don't know too much about, about Anderson. So I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Forrest Lamp, the more experienced guard. Um, between the two. But I forgot about I Butker. So I Butker is going to be backing up Cody Ford. That's going to be a battle in itself. So guess what? Somebody's getting cut. Ryan Bates, Forrest Lamp, I Butker. That's your competition right now for your backups in terms of guard play because I Butker plays guard. So Forrest Lamp, Ryan Bates, I Butker, I think it's going to be between I Butker and Ryan Bates, who makes the team? Who's part of the process and who is not? Who's part of the problem between Ryan Bates and Ike Butker? I'll let you guys decide. What do y'all think? Let me know in the chat how y'all feel. And while you guys are doing that, we're going to move to the defensive side of the ball. This is where it's going to be fun. Very interesting. Process or problem? David Kane says, yo, it's Ike all day. Ike all day, that means Ryan Bates is gone. Damn, somebody said Forrest Lamp is going to be cut. Forrest Lamp and you got to stash Anderson. Very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, they brought Forrest Lamp over for a reason, right? What is he, a former second rounder? Played the full year last year, healthy. And when he's on, he could be pretty damn good. My man Bobby Ray coming with a with a with a hot take. He says, "Yo, shit, Ford could be the one that's odd, the odd man out. If Ford doesn't get it together, shit, I can see that happening too." This is a big year for Cody Ford, huge year. He knows it. He knows it. The whole team knows it. This is a big year for you, big fella, because they didn't bring in one lineman. They didn't bring two linemen. They brought in three. And we have two of the linemen can play inside and outside. Tommy Dole can play guard, can play tackle, and can swing over to right tackle as well. And they got nastiness with them. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yo, I'm not talking about Bobby Hart. Bobby Hart's ass, man. He's gone. Are you kidding me? He's just there for camp body, bro. Jamil Douglas is the same as, same as Jamil Douglas. That's a long shot. That's a long shot. But according to my man, Bobby, Bobby Hill, it could be that Cody Ford would be, it could be the, the odd man out. Hmm. Hmm. Because I know he didn't like it when we brought in Forrest Lamp. He was not a fan. Not one bit. Hey, Cody Ford isn't another Cyrus Quandrill. My gosh, Cyrus Quandrill was an epic failure. Epic. 
Oh my gosh, Cyrus Quanjo, Cyril Richardson, epic failure. Yo, we had some, we had some doozies these days, man. Holy jumping. <laughs> Boy, you are, you a fool, man. Yo, you think Brian Dable's got enough anchor? Can he anchor enough? Shit, that'd be nice. You know he'd protect the shit out of Josh Allen, though. You damn right he would. All right, so let's 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 run this let's run this by again. Because uh, you y'all got me y'all got me effed up now. So Deion Dawkins will say Forrest Lamp, Mitch Morse, John Feliciano, Daryl Williams, Spencer Brown, Tommy Doyle. Now the competition between Ryan Bates, Ike Butker, Cody Ford. Oh, <laughs> Yo, man, Cody Ford could be out. Shit, let, no, let, listen, I might, I might have to, I might have to do it. I might have to do it. I, I don't want to, but I might have to. So it could be that Cody Ford could be the odd man out. When you really think about it and you look at what's happening, Ike Bucker, Ryan Bates, Cody Ford. Could it be? Jack Anderson is in the mix as well. Mini in a mini Richie incognito. Nastiness. Let me tell you something. The three offensive linemen that they brought in are known to be a nasty bunch. Cody Ford is not. Well, at least he hasn't shown that he can be thus far. So is Cody Ford on the block? Could he be traded instead of just being cut? Ooh, it's going to be a hot summer, folks. It's going to be a hot summer. It's going to be a hot summer. So let, I'm, I'm going to go out on that. I'm going to go out on the limb and say, yo, Cody Ford, he's either traded or he's cut. Forrest Lamp is kept. Jack Anderson is kept for depth. And they like him. And Ike Butker, they seem to like what he did uh, in the stretch of the season. Cody Ford might be on his way out of Buffalo. This is all speculation. I could be out of my mind right now. But when I'm looking at what is going on, reading some of the tea leaves, could be him. Could be him. Kendall Mursky. If Ford doesn't make the team, they're going to try and trade him. That's for sure. You're not just going to get rid of him just like that. Can't lose all the investments into a second round trade. You're right about that. Question is, what are we going to get from him? Because you know anybody, ain't nobody going to be giving up second or third. It was going to be like a fifth, sixth. And you know, our guy loves himself some draft picks. Brandon B will take draft picks all day. Could it be on his way out? Stay tuned. <laughs> We're going to find out this offseason. Let's move on to the defense. Let's move on to the defense. Yo, my man, Matt, Matt McGurmy says, yo, that's a gross speculation. Gross speculation is the best kind of speculation. Golly, it's true. It's it's a nasty one, but hey, we might be it might it might happen. Tilt Money says if Ford busts, trust the process means cutting your losses and moving on sooner rather than later. Trust the process. This is what we call this process or problem. And the process is we deemed him a problem and we got to get rid of him. He has over he's as he has underwhelmed. He's moved all over the place. He has no home. And we could make him completely not part of this team by, 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 the, by, the, first, by the first bit of the season. It's going to be fun. Trade Cody Ford for Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> right. Right. Moving on to the defense. Let's go. Process or problem. Defense. <coughs> Excuse me. The D-line. Somebody says, yo, Rico was 100% on Isaiah McKenzie getting cut last season. I was. I remember that. I was wanting Duke Williams. Duke Williams. It was between Isaiah McKenzie and Duke Williams. And I told, I took Duke Williams. And guess what? I was wrong. Just like a whole whack of y'all are wrong all the time. But I'll take it. Shit, I don't give a damn. This is the point of this type of, <laughs> of, this type of content. We're guessing. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen. Let's go to defense. The D-line. We'll start with the defensive line. Here we go. Addison, Jerry Hughes, Carlos Basham, Russo. There's your four. We kept nine defensive linemen last year. Nine defensive linemen. 
So I'm curious to see how you guys feel about how this is going to play out because let's go to the defense. Excuse me. Let's go to the defense. So we kept five cornerbacks. See, I, I like how they have Saran Neal as a corner. I don't see him that way, but I mean, we're, we'll, we'll figure some things out because Dean Marlowe is now gone, but we'll figure some things out, right? Tremaine Edmonds leads the way in the linebacking crew. And then Jerry Hughes leads the way in the defensive line crew, right? We kept nine linemen last year. Do we dare do the same this year? Are we keeping more? We keeping the same? Let's just say we do keep the same amount of linemen, right? Let me give you the breakdown. Nine offensive linemen, nine defensive linemen, six linebackers, five corners, and four safeties. Let's figure it out. Let us figure it out. Shout out to my girl, Abby. She says, hey, let me know where you hit up, uh, where to hit you up for the Merge Rico. I got to work on finals graduating on Sunday. Keep up the great show. Uh, listen, congratulations. Um, did you say you're graduating on Sunday? Get out of here. Finals graduating on Sunday. Shit, good for you, girl. Uh, hit me up on my Twitter, real Rico underscore BF, or hit up uh, the Buffalo Fanatics at gmail.com, and we'll get, that set up. we'll get that set up for you. So, defensive side of the ball. I appreciate you, Abby. Yo, Tilt says, so stop with the Duke Williams, man. That guy gets more, more free pub than anyone. Yo, leave me alone, man. <laughs> Yo, leave me alone, man. Duke was my guy, but you notice I've been a little quiet on, on, on my guy, Duke. I've been a little quiet. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know the way things have been, have been you know what I mean, going. It's not going to happen. Defense. Mario Addison. Jerry Hughes. Carlos Basham. Boogie Basham. Greg Russo. Shout out to my Zoe Haitian. What's up, Sac Passe? That's my guy. I got to show love. It's even better that he's on, he's on the Bills. And on top of that, he's Haitian. Let's go. Now, AJ Epinesa. There's five right there. There's your DNs. Addison, Hughes, Basham, Russo, AJ. Five. Bam Johnson, six. Ed Oliver, seven. Harrison Phillips, eight. Justin Zimmer, 9. Starla Tulele, 10. Butler, 11. So we got some cuts to make. <laughs> we got some cuts to make. Let me repeat that because AK, AK Cash was like, check this out. Epinesa, Basham, Hughes, Russo, Addison, Star, Oliver, Phillips, Butler. Hmm. So you want Addison and Hughes. Russo, Basham, Epinesa. So you have your five. You have Star, Oliver, Phillips, Butler. Okay. You guys don't want F.A. Obata? F.A. Obata? You're not feeling that? You think he gets cut? What y'all feeling? What about Justin Zimmer? I don't think I saw Zimmer on your list. A.K. Cash? You think Zimmer gets cut? I don't know, man. I think Zimmer makes the, the team over Butler. And then we save money on Butler. I'll take Zimmer over Butler for sure. I thought Butler was the one that was going to be cut. And we were, we were going to keep um, Jefferson. But that's not a bad line. I'm looking for you guys to give me what you feel is the best line for this team. Talk to me. Let me give you the rundown on who the linemen are. I think I just gave you the main names, right? There's Brian Cox. There's Mike Love on there. But I think those guys have an outside chance on making the squad. I got to be realistic on that. So let's, let's run that back again. Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, Carlos Basham, Greg Russo, AJ Epinesa. There's your five. You know that's a lock. Or is it? Bam Johnson, six. Ed Oliver, seven. Harrison Phillips. Is Harrison Phillips making the team? Do we feel good about him? I think he does. I'm not even thinking about that. Justin Zimmer. I think Justin Zimmer makes the team as well. Starla Tulele has to make the team. So Jerry Butler. Jerry, you got me saying Jerry Butler. Butler is the odd man out. F.A. Obata, odd man out. I don't know if they're keeping 10. Because you keep 10, that means you got to keep less linebackers. Or you got to keep less running backs. You got to keep, you got to keep less somewhere. 
Damn, y'all saying Obata is a keeper. So if Obata is a keeper, who you cutting? You can't just keep, you can't just add a guy on the squad. You got to get rid of somebody. Somebody said, put Zimmer on the practice squad. You have the nerve to put Zimmer on the practice squad after what that man did for us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Harrison is too much of a process guy. Matches the mentality of philosophy too much. I don't think they're going to get rid of Harrison. They like Harrison. And I think Harrison knows that he's got to have a huge year coming up. He came back coming off of injury. He's got to, he went a full year of playing. Now he's going to come in going ready, ready to go. Does Mario Addison make this team? I think he does. And I'll tell you why Mario Addison makes a team. Because you need these two veteran guys to, to mentor these two young guys. You don't just toss in young guys like that. And I'll tell you right now, McDermott is not about just yet throwing in young guys and say, see if you can do it. No, no, no. He's about his guys that have played before, that have experience. They're not about to do that. So Addison has to stay. I agree. What are y'all feeling? Damn. Bobby says Addison cut. You want to cut Addison. Very interesting. They rotate a lot. They're going to get their playing time. To me, you got to keep a guy like Addison. Adam Anderson says, yo, Addison will be a cap cut. Keep the younger guys whose cost doesn't grossly outweigh production. Damn, y'all are harsh. I like it. I like hearing it. BWT says, your Butler and Addison are cut. Get out of here. Not part of the process. Part of the problem. Here we go. Richard Rush. We're going to keep four defensive tackles. They're going to be Star, Harry, Oliver, Zimmer. I'm with you so far. Five defensive, ta five defensive ends. Jerry Hughes, Bam Johnson, AJ Epinesa, Russo, and Basham. So Addison is cut. You guys are going to tell me that Addison is going to get cut? Is Addison going to be the guy that gets cut? He's not part of the process, people? Ooh, you guys are ruthless. Ombre Lop says, yo, Russo, Basham, Epinesa, Hughes, Obata. You put Obata in there. Okay. So you got Russo, Basham, both rookies. You got Epinesa, Jerry Hughes, Obata. Oliver, Phillips, Star, Zimmer. So Addison is gone. Hmm. And you got Obata in there. Yo, you guys are, yo, this is getting interesting. So you're going to cut Bam Johnson too, special teamer? You think Obata is going to give you what, what Bam Johnson does? I don't know, man. You got to keep Bam Johnson. You got to. You got to. This is interesting to see how you guys feel about this, man. I'm not going I'm not going to hate. My guy Kendall. Let's see if Kendall can can give us something that we all feel good about. So Star Oliver. There's your defensive tackles, Phillips Zimmer. There's your four DTs. Russo, Hughes, Basham, Bam Johnson, Epinesa. There goes Mario Addison is cut. You guys do not want Mario Addison on this team. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, here we go. P Tilt's gonna he's gonna put his 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 two cents in here. Tilt Money says, All right, here's my nine. Addison, there you go. I'm with you on so far. So far, so good. Addison Hughes, AJ Epinesa, Greg Russo, Basham. Butler, you're going to keep Butler. Okay. Butler, Star, Ed Oliver, and Harry. So Zimmer is gone. You have Zimmer gone. And uh, who else do, you see, do I see gone? I think it's Zimmer. So you don't want Zimmer on this team. You're like, nah, fam, you're not making that team. You're out of here. I got you. I mean, I don't, I don't mind that one here. I don't mind that either. Star, E, because you know Star's not going nowhere. That's a good line. So I guess we cutting uh we nah Jonathan, we can't cut star. That's too much money. It's not happening. So I see that you guys are thinking about future. You guys are thinking about the future when this when it comes to this making this team. So Obata and Zimmer are gone. I think Obata's gone too. I think Obata's a nice story. You know what I'm saying? UK. You know what I'm saying? It looks good. Coming from the Panthers. He had five sacks in the last bit of his season. I get that part. But, ah, nah, man, I'm going, I think Zimmer makes a team, but I, I don't think, uh, I don't think Obata makes it. I don't think Obata makes it. So here, here, I'm going to give you my nine here. So Mario Addison stays. Hughes, Basham, Russo, there's your five, AJ. Bam Johnson for sure. 
I'm going to put, so pretty much is Obata's going to be cut, Butler's going to be cut. Phillips, Zimmer, Ed O, and Star. Let's go. It's going to be tough, man. It is going to be tough. I'm going to see, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It's going to be tough. So let's move on. To me, Obata and Butler are gone. Thank you, Richard Forbes. That's what, that's, that's what I'm with you. I'm with you. Zimmer stays. There's no question. He stays for me. Let's go to the linebacking room. Let's go to the linebacking room. Bam, Bam is not necessarily, um, he's saying Bam is not a lock, but he's a special teamer. You guys, you guys are dismissing his special teams ability. He's solid on special teams. Solid. You guys are, you guys are dismissing him, man. I'm not dismissing Bam Johnson for sure. So is it, this is going to be a tough, tough, tough room to cut. And there's going to be guys that you like and you're like, ooh, I didn't see that coming. But Obata's got to go. Obata's got to go. So let's go to the linebacking room. Process or problem? The linebacking room. I mean, I think it's pretty simple, man. Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, AJ Klein. I think AJ Klein's going to remain on the team. Uh, Tyler Matikiewicz, he's going to remain on the team. He took a pay cut, so he's staying on the team. Uh, Tyrell Dotson and uh, Andre Smith. We did we did bring in Tyrell Adams uh, and a Markel Lee, but I think um, when you look at what the team has, AJ Klein, Medicavage, um, Tyrell Dotson, I think he played well when he got a chance. I think those are those are the guys that are going to be in in on this team. There's these are six linebackers: Edmonds, Milano, AJ Klein, Medicavage, Tyrell Dotson, Andre Smith. Those are your your six linebackers. So Tyrell Adams, not part of the process. Sorry, sir. And on top of that. Uh, we're going to put uh, Markel Lee. See you later. You're not making this team. My bad. You out of here. But hold on a second. Some people feel some people feel that that is not the case. They feel like Markel Lee is a low-key player to make this team. See? So Steve Liss says Adams is going to make this team. You're going to make him over Tyrell Dotson, though? I don't know about that. Tyrell Dotson played well when he was on, this, when he was on the team. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not too, too keen on that. So that's my, that's my thing. Adams is a sleeper. You guys might think Adams is a sleeper. To me, Tyrell Dotson uh, makes it over Adams, and so Andre Smith will also make the team. They like him. They brought him back. Um, they like him on special teams. So that's the way I'm gonna keep it. My man Chris Jenke comes in and says, "Yo, here's how I think the the six linebackers are gonna go: Edmonds, Milano, Klein, Matikavich, Tyrell Dotson, Tyrell Adams. Huh? Interesting. So Tyrell Adams over Andre Smith." That's what you're thinking. I'm taking Andre Smith because they're familiar with him. They like him. But if Tyrell Adams is better, I'm going to tell you this. Tyrell Adams is not an athletic individual. He's a thumper. That's what he is. Andre Smith gives you versatility. So we're about to find out. k Dog thinks we should keep five linebackers and keep 10 linemen. That could also be a possibility, especially because we play a lot of nickel. So eh, that could be something. That could be something as well. So, um, uh, the linebacker room is pretty easy. Tilt money. What's my man Tilt? Tilt says, check this out. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep Adams. Shit. Lee and Smith could be battling for every roster, for every last roster spot on the 53-man roster. For sure. That's about, that's an accurate, that's an accurate take. That's an accurate take. Let's go to the cornerback room. This is interesting. Trey White, Levi Wallace, Teron Johnson, Dane Jackson, that's four. The fifth corner is the tricky one. We drafted Wild Goose, Rashad Wild Goose, but we also have Cam Lewis, former UB corner. They like Cam Lewis. Cam Lewis is a, he's, he's got a lot of tenacity. He, he goes after it. But do you go with your recently sexy draft pick in Wild Goose? Everybody's making names and he's got OJ's number, rah, rah, rah. Or do you keep Cam Lewis? Because that's what it's going to take when it comes to the cornerback room. It's between those two guys. Who do you guys like? Cam Lewis or Rashad? What's his name? Wild Goose. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Ismael Monero says, yo, I love me some Cam Lewis. I do too. I think Cam Lewis is uh, is an underrated player. I think he can play. I think he's got an opportunity to make this team um, like he did last year. Got his opportunity. 
I think he can, man. Levi Wallace is obviously going to make this team. Question is who's going to start, but that's gonna, that's a whole nother ball game. Somebody said, yo, you got to put Cam. Can't forget the regulator. <laughs> Elijah. I don't know about that. I think we're I think we're rostering six cornerbacks. Okay, here we go, Kendall. Six cornerbacks. White, Wallace, Jackson, Johnson, Elijah Griffith. So you really feel, you know what I'm saying? Warren G's son is going to regulate himself on this roster. And we're going to keep Wagu. So you're going to get rid of Cam Lewis? Yo, you a ruthless mother effer, man. You a ruthless mother effer. <laughs> yo, Tilt Money says, yo, Wild Goose is still pretty raw. Cam will have the leg up and start camp, but the battle could be even, uh, could be, could even over time. I think Cam Lewis takes that. I think he's hungry. He didn't have an opportunity. He had an opportunity to be on the team and the squad longer, but he got hurt and they shelved him. So he's, he's anticipating a bigger year and he don't give a damn if a rookie comes in. He's going to try to get his spot on there. So Rashad, Goose, the goose is loose. I think he's the one that gets kind of put on the shelf and uh, practice squad. That's the way I look at it. I think Cam Lewis, Cam Lewis takes that, 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 that roster spot and they go with five. So recapping process or problem. Levi Wallace, Trey White, Teron Johnson, Dane Jackson, Rashad Wild Goose is going to be practice squad. He's going to be cut. And Cam Lewis makes the squad. Elijah Griffiths is better than Wild Goose. I mean, we won't see about Elijah Griffiths, but I think he's going to be battling with Rashad Wild Goose. You know what I'm saying? And they're both probably gonna, they're both going to get cut. Sorry, that's just that's those that's just the breaks. Last but not least, the safety room. I think the safety room is pretty pretty. I mean, it's it's put together. You got Jordan Poirier, Micah Hyde. Hold on a second. So, someone someone doesn't doesn't agree. I don't disagree with uh, Ombre. What's Ombre saying? Ombre says uh, Elijah's better than Gr oh, Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll find out. But they're both going to get cut, so it won't matter. <laughs> they, they're both going to get cut, so it won't, it won't matter at all. Safety. <coughs> Safety. Jordan Poirier and Micah Hyde. Right? I think we got that down, Pat. Saran Neal. Right? There's your third. Jaquan Johnson. There's your fourth. And then the, the now here's the deal. We keep five safeties. Here's where it's going to come down to it. And you guys let me know how you guys feel about this. Because if you look at this defense, last year, we kept four, we kept four safeties. But really, Saran Neal is a safety. So I put him in the safety room. Right? So if you look at Saran Neal, you drop him into the safety room. Dean Marlowe's gone. It's going to be between, to me, in my opinion, I think we keep five safeties, Josh Thomas and DeMar Hamlin. So, Poyer, Hyde, Neil, Johnson, and I think Hamlin makes the team. I think I like Hamlin's game a lot. I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll keep those guys. It's, it's as simple as that. What's Till saying? Hyde, Poyer, Neil, Johnson, Hamlin. That's what I'm talking about. Just like that, like let's not let's not over let's not overcomplicate life. It makes it it makes it simple and to the point. Let's see what Kendall Kendall says. Yeah, I think we keep five safeties. You guys are with me. Perfect. Hyde, Poirier, Hamlin, Jaquan Johnson, Tariq, um, Tariq Thompson, Wild Goose replaces Saran Neal as the gunner. Are you nuts, Kendall? They, I mean, I can't call you nuts because we don't know what's gonna happen. But I cannot see Saran Neal being replaced because they love Saran Neal. That boy is a gunning machine. Did you forget the production that Saran Neal gave us? Kendall, you can't just dismiss Saran Neal like that. Come on, Ken. You tripping on that, man. Yeah, Kendall's high on his UDFAs, man. <laughs> yo, somebody calling you out, man. David Kane is like, yo, you, you're too, yo, bring it down. Settle down. You know what I'm saying? That is a hot take. <laughs> Oh, shit. Hot takes over here, baby. Yeah, you hot taking everywhere, boy. <laughs> you talking about Obata. You talking about all them cats, man. Yo, listen, we're keeping five. Hamlin's making this team. That boy's nice. He's just around the ball. And that's it, man. I think I like that. I think I'm, I'm good with that squad. I'm good with that squad. I'm with you, man. Hamlin is 100% making this team. Agreed. Damar Hamlin and Tariq Thompson. Yo, Bobby Ray. Give me your safeties that you're keeping. I assume we keep five. So who are you cutting if you're going to keep Tariq? 
I'm curious about this Bobby Ray because he he's always talking ish in the background. Like he's he's the guru that knows it all. And by the way, technically, we tied when it comes to our draft points and all that good stuff. So I don't want to give you that trophy. We should we should be splitting that trophy, just so you know. Um, but yeah, I'm not giving up. I'm not, I'm there's no way I'm letting go of Saran Neal. Y'all tripping. You guys are all tripping, man. So Saran Neal. My guy, my guy Steve Liz says Saran Neal is way better than Jaquan Johnson. Johnson is getting cut. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I didn't see that one coming. Nah, not impossible. Not impossible. But we'll see. Damn, you are tripping. Whoever put this one, you you tripping right now, bro. Chill out. Chill out. My man, True to Heart, says, yo, <laughs> who will retire this year as a bill? I think every year so far someone has retired. Star Latule? Star's like, yo, man, I, I had the year off. I liked it. My body, my body was more, I think my body's still tired. I'm good. See you guys later. That would help us tremendously. But I don't think it's going to happen. So who retires this year? I don't know. Who retired last year? What do we have that said, you know what, we're going to call it quits. We're done. I can't remember. Saran Neal is amazing at what he does. You have to keep him. Jaquan Johnson is is, is not getting cut. Dude will take over in the future. Yeah, I don't know why you guys want to cut cut uh, Jaquan Johnson. Man, that boy is a ball hawk. Ball hawk. We need ball hawk. That's the way I look at it, man. So I'm not I'm not even thinking about cutting Jaquan Johnson. But we don't make the damn decisions. They do. So we're going to find out. Tilt Money says, yo, total secondary. White. Trey White, uh, you got Dane Jackson, Levi Wallace, Ter Teron Johnson, Wild Goose. You got Wild Goose on the squad. Uh, and you got Hyde, Poirier, Neal, Johnson, Hamlin. Total of 10. Shit. We're going to find out. We're going we're gonna to play this over again and see how you guys do. Honest to goodness, this, this is actually pretty dope, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So um, that's it, man. We went through the tight end room. We went. Let's recap what we did throughout this whole show. So we already know the tight the, the quarterback room. Um, <laughs> yo, you know what? <laughs> you said it right there, man. Rico, at the end of the day, man, we don't know shit. You absolutely right, Mr. Handsome. We don't know dick. I mean, they're gonna make their decisions and we're gonna be like, oh shit, I didn't see that coming. What? Singletary got cut? Yo, I did not see that happening. Obviously, it's not gonna happen. But you guys catch what I'm saying. There's gonna be some surprises, right? Oh shit, Levi Wallace got cut. We didn't see that coming. Dane Jackson took over. Wild Goose seems to be that dude. Levi Wallace might be the one that's out. We don't know. We have no idea. We're about to we're about to find out. So it'll be interesting. And you know what, Levi Wallace. I mean, sh I know we signed him on a one year deal, but I mean, he he ain't he ain't locked in like that. He ain't locked in like that. So we'll find out. <laughs> Yo, these are thirteen and three problems for real. You ain't lying, man. <laughs> you ain't lying. Uh, Tilt Money says, I think we saw here is the team has depth and is a very talented top to bottom. Facts. Good players get cut. That's what happens when you have a good team. No longer rebuilding for sure, man. And we're not, we're not like we sent, we're not sitting here giving a guy an opportunity that clearly doesn't, he wouldn't start on another team. Every one of our guys that can play can start on another team. We have some depth players that can start on another team. That's how deep this team is. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, shoot, look at our receiving room. We have some good players that potentially could get cut. Isaiah McKenzie could be cut. Isaiah Hodgins could be cut. You know what I mean? So, Stevenson maybe gets cut. We're not certain as to who's going to make this squad, but I'm pretty I'm pretty confident um, in this team. Very confident in this team. Uh, Ike Brown retired last year, and they traded... Uh, and Trey Adams, that's right. Trey Adams this year. Shit, you're not, you're not lying, man. So obviously McDermott forces people to retire. <laughs> you're a fool, man. Hey, fam. Either I cut you or you retire. Which is it? Oh shit, you're gonna and we'll give you a little package. Don't you worry about it. But it's time. We don't want to take you out back. We don't want to take you out back and tell you to look at the roses. Look at the flowers. Look at the flowers. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to do that. And if you guys know what that reference comes from, salute to you guys. You guys are you guys are real ones. You guys are the real ones. So that being said, let's run it back. Quarterback, Alan Trubisky, 
from. Those are your three, right? Bitcoin Barclays gone. Here, enter in Trubisky. So those were the three that we had last year. This year is going to be Alan Trubisky from. All right. Uh, somebody said of mice of men. My God, you went way back. You went way back with that. But no, that's not what I was referring to. I was referring to The Walking Dead with my girl, Carol. Carol is a savage, boy. I haven't caught up with my Walking Dead this year. I've been caught up all the way. This 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 season, I haven't caught up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to binge watch that and go through it because that's my show. That's my show. I love Walking Dead. Anyway. We're going we gonna to proceed. But yeah, man, look at the flowers, boy. Look at the flowers. So that being said, Alan Trubisky from running back room, Singletary, Moss, Brita, and it's going to be Taiwan Jones. Antonio Williams, not part of the process. You're going to the practice squad. All right. Uh, oh, man. You, did you, you said it's, this past season sucks? God, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. Um. Tight end room, pretty self-explanatory, right? Knox, Hollister, Sweeney, Becker. If Sweeney's healthy, look out. Knox, Hollister, Sweeney, and Hollister is going to be a very surprise. He's going to be very, um, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to that, all right? Linebacking room. On the, excuse me, we're going to stick to the offense. Receiver room. This is a tricky one. Let's go buy it again. Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Gabriel Davis. Isaiah McKenzie. Did we say Stevenson? Or did we go Isaiah Hodgins? And then it's going to be between Stevenson and McKenzie. And if you're going to pick between the two, what do you do? McKenzie or Stevenson? And it comes down to return. Who's the better return guy? Who do you feel comfortable with? Do you dismiss team chemistry and the ability that you know this offense inside and out. Do you go with Lil Dirty? Or do you go with the rookie? Mm, that's tough. That's tough. Yo, Reggie Gilliam is making the team. Did I not say Reggie Williams? Reggie, Reggie Williams. Reggie Gilliam. Hollister, Sweeney. Uh, Hollister, yeah, it's Gilliam. I didn't say, I didn't say Gilliam. Gilliam is definitely part, is the fourth. He's a fourth slash fullback. But the receiver room is tough. So I'm going to say Isaiah Hodgins makes the team. We're not keeping seven receivers. We're keeping six. Oh, I don't know about that one, man. I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave that shit. I ain't touching that one. I'm going I'm to let that be. The edge has to go to the veteran guy. But they also signed him for like $800,000. $800, so it'd be, it'd be nothing to just get rid of him. Oh, I ain't going to touch that one. Let's move on. The line, I think, the, I think we were good with the line. Right? Process or problem. We went with Deion Dawkins, um, Forrest Lamp, Mitch Morse, John Feliciano, Darrell Williams, Spencer Brown, Tommy Doyle. Uh, we're gonna go with Bates, Forrest, excuse me, Bates, um, who's the Bates, Ike Bucker, and Cody Ford. One of those guys is getting cut. Who is gonna be? I think Forrest Lamp takes the starting spot. It's Cody Ford's to lose, but I think he will lose it. And then it becomes Ike Butker, Cody Ford, or Ryan Bates. You guys decide. That'll be that'll be that'll be something else, right? Defense. Jerry Hughes, Addison, Basham, Russo, AJ Epinesa. There's your five. Bam Johnson, six. Ed Oliver, Phillips. And to me, oh shit. You gotta go Zoo Zimmer. And I'm forgetting star. So, damn. Addison could be cut. Oh, shit. Maybe Addison gets cut and Carlos Basham comes in and takes over. You know what? There it is. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm renagging now. I'm going back. Addison is out. Here comes Carlos Basham. And it gives Greg Russo time to develop. There it is. So it's going to be like this. Jerry Hughes, Carlos Basham, uh, Greg Rousseau, AJ Epinesa, Bam Johnson, Ed Oliver, Phillips, Zimmer, Starr, Butler, and Addison. We out of here. Cut. You are not part of the process. You are part of the problem. Oof, that hurt for me to say that. <laughs> Let me back it up. That shit hurt for me to say. I didn't mean to say it, but that's just the breaks. I think that's how it's going to go down. 
Golly, that was a little harder than I thought. All right. Linebacker room is pretty good. Yo, the old flip-flop, you're right, man. When I came back to it, I was like, golly. Hold on a second now. Let me move back. Yeah, I think we've got to do it. I think Addison Addison might be the one uh, to, to take to bite the dust. Whoo, that was tough. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, bo- 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 boom. O-line. Now we're going to go to the cornerback room. Levi Wallace, Trey White, Teron Johnson, Dane Jackson, Cam Lewis. Wild Goose is probably going to get cut or he's going to be put on uh, on practice squad. <laughs> Yo, you're a fool. Um, and then uh, we'll go to, I think that's it, man. That's cornerback room. So, yeah, that's look, that looks pretty good to me, man. Les Brown says, yo, can you stop counting Bam as a lock? Pretty please with sugar on top. Yo, Bam, you're dismissing Bam Johnson's ability to be on special teams. Y'all are, you guys are so dismissive of that. You can't. You can't. You can't dismiss that. If you do that, who are you going to replace Bam Johnson with? Can you tell me? You're going to put an unknown guy? You can't. Yo, it's tough, man. Yo, nobody said this shit was going to be easy. <laughs> it's never easy making these damn decisions, man. So let us leave it at that. Let's put a pin in it, is what they say. And then we'll see when these final results come out. We can revisit the, this show and find out who makes the team. I might even have to put this on paper. You know what I'm saying? And edit my little book that I put all my stuff in. Because I was like, yo, these are locks. I'm like, wait a minute now. Now that I say it out loud, it's different. Whew. It's going to be something, man. So that is that, folks. That is our time. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support that you guys have been giving to the Buffalo Fanatics. You know what I'm saying? I got to put my little intro music out and my outro. You guys have been great. You guys continue to support Buffalo Fanatics. You guys show love all the time. This was a fun show, folks. The process or problem is always a tough one to to go through but i i usually do a a pre-recorded show but this is a little more interesting when you guys are in it with me so folks that's it that's my time you guys have been great you guys be good to one another you know i'm saying reach out to the people that need it you know i'm saying and uh you guys have a great one so until next time ish your boy let me put my music up a little bit Until next time, it's your boy, and I'm gone.